For more than 20 years, the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, has worked with thousands of communities worldwide to support local action to advance the Millennium Development Goals and Sustainable Development. In 2002, UNDP founded the Equator Initiative which brings together the United Nations, governments, civil society groups, businesses and grassroots organizations. This partnership arose from the recognition that the greatest concentrations of both biodiversity and acute poverty coincide in Equator Belt countries. The Equator Initiative aims to identify, support and scale up local best practices that demonstrate success in environmental stewardship and poverty reduction. One way the Equator Initiative fulfills its mission is through the Equator Prize which is awarded every two years to community groups throughout the rural tropics that are generating effective community-based solutions to the most critical development issues. The Equator Prize was first awarded in 2002 in Johannesburg to recognize local action as a powerful engine for achieving the Millennium Development Goals. A decade and five Equator Prize award cycles later, the achievements and experiences of 127 prize-winning communities stand as a testament to the power of local action. Tonight we celebrate and honor the communities that are leading this important work we recognize that this local experience and knowledge not only benefits other communities, but it is also invaluable for informing national policy and even global negotiations and conventions. This local action strongly advances us all towards the sustainable future we want. Tonight is about honouring those who don't wait. Tonight is about honouring those who have got on and made a difference for sustainable development across its dimensions in their communities. The people you're going to meet tonight are, are genuinely inspirational. Uh, not only because they're leaders, but because they're not waiting on the rest of us. We are gathered here tonight to celebrate the achievements of amazing people working at the front lines of sustainable development in their own communities. Please don't give up, because for everyone who is here on the stage tonight, there are many out there who count on you, who count on us. Bom restinho de Rio mais 20 para todos nós, para todos vocês. Obrigado. Boa noite. Bom, eu estou muito honrada de estar aqui. Como é um evento das Nações Unidas, há uma expectativa de que eu fale inglês. Isso será um desafio enorme para mim. Conto com a compreensão dos amigos brasileiros e dos, de todo, todo mundo presente aqui nessa linda premiação. 
Okay? Obrigada. Good evening, everyone. I will be one of your masters of ceremony tonight. I am so honored to be here with all of you and you, Edward Norton. We share the same love and concern for the environment and the plight of local and native peoples. We are gathered here tonight to celebrate the achievements of amazing people working at the front lines of sustainable development in their own communities. The importance of their success cannot be underestimated. After all, local and native communities are the source of the kind of innovation and leadership that we need so much in the world. It is my belief that, thank you, it's true, it is my belief that the people you will meet here tonight are not only minor contributors to the extraordinary gathering we have in Rio this week. They are, or should be, at the very center of our discussion, our hopes, and our vision for the world we want to create. <clears throat> Sustainable development is not a product of a big decisions made by big institutions. It is an everyday creation of a large number of people working to reshape our models of prosperity from the borrow up. I am sure you will be inspired and energized by what you will see tonight and will leave this room knowing that only through more initiatives like this one where we let more voices into the conversation and where we learn from practice, we will be able to tackle the challenges that we face. So please pay close attention to the winners for they are the present and the future of sustainable development. And now with you, Edward Norton. Uh, good evening. It's, uh, it's wonderful to be here tonight. This is an event I genuinely enjoy. Um, I think that uh, it's, it's usually difficult to get this many people in a room together to agree on anything. And, and yet I think that it's safe to say that all of us uh, here tonight would agree that the challenge facing humanity to adapt the way that we live to reclaim a harmonious and sustainable balance with the natural systems of this planet that support our civilization is without any question the defining challenge of the age that we live in right now. And when I try to think about 500 years from now uh, and imagine what it will be like, I feel fairly confident that all of our geopolitical dramas, all of our social culture wars, all of our movies, our IPOs, our elections will be looked at as idle dinner table conversation that shouldn't have been indulged in to the degree that it was if we have failed to face this fundamental challenge. People will wonder what were they thinking about as the fundamental fabric of life degraded beneath their feet and they did nothing. So we're faced with a profound challenge, uh, but every generation gets called to its own challenge, and I think this is ours, and we have to find inspiration in it. Facing that challenge is going to require leadership of different forms from many people. Obviously, when we gather at a convention like Rio Plus 20, we are looking for leadership from our political leaders, from our national leaders, uh, exhorting them, uh, praying, crossing our fingers, that they will show the boldness and the vision to make uh, substantive decisions to advance this agenda. But even if our political leadership succeeded wildly here this week, 
if the communities of people that live in the critical ecosystem don't actually embrace these priorities themselves, find a way to thrive, to support their families, to achieve their own dreams within this new paradigm of sustainability, all of what transpires at the political leadership, even in success, will just be talk. So as Camilla said, I think the local challenge, the local leaders truly are the ones on the front lines. They're the ones who are putting the ideas into action uh, and transforming uh, the way that they live with courage uh, and, and vision. The people you're going to meet tonight are, are genuinely inspirational, uh, not only because they're leaders, but because they're not waiting on the rest of us. A lot of us sit around and kind of hope and complain and wonder uh, when the leadership is going to move it forward. None of the people that you're going to meet tonight are waiting on anybody else. They're just doing it. They're just doing it uh, with passion. With passion, with very little resources, uh, motivated by their own concern for their communities and the future of their cultures. They've moved ahead, and in doing so, they really, really highlight to me, and I, I hope to all of us, that none of us have any excuse for apathy, because so many of them are doing so much more with so much less than the rest of us have at our disposal. So uh, take great inspiration from them tonight. I think it's a, it's a really, really uh, wonderful uh, spectrum of human culture, but all bound together uh, by the commitment to these values that we all share. And uh, I, I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Uh, I have the great uh, honor tonight to introduce our keynote speaker, uh, someone that I know profoundly shares this vision, these priorities, uh, and takes inspiration from uh, our Equator Prize winners. Uh, Helen Clark is the administrator of the United Nations Development Program. And Helen uh, is not your average bureaucrat. She has shown truly exceptional leadership in the area of sustainable development and has a long track record of success, both in her previous life as a two-term prime minister of New Zealand and her position now uh, at the helm of UN's largest development agency. She's been an incredible champion of indigenous people's rights and empowerment, sustainable energy, food security, climate change adaptation, biodiversity conservation, the empowerment of women. Helen Clark has really, truly demonstrated uh, leadership and commitment in all of the areas that we would define as sustainable development that provide the structure for this whole evening. Uh, and I want to take the opportunity uh, personally as the uh, ambassador, uh, the Goodwill Ambassador for the Convention on Biodiversity for supporting programs uh, uh, like the Convention on Biodiversity, like this Equator Initiative, like the Small Grants Program uh, that recognize how community-based solutions really do translate into inspiration for national and global change. So please welcome our keynote speaker for the evening, Administrator of UNDP, Helen Clark. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Camilla. There are many volunteers for sustainable development here tonight, and you are two of them. And a very special thanks to you for emceeing the evening. Can I begin by acknowledging the Indigenous people who offered the blessing on our behalf this evening? And can I respond in the words of the Indigenous people of my country, Aotearoa New Zealand? Ena iwi, ena reo, ena rangatira ma tena koto, tena koto, tena koto kato. And in the languages of the Pacific, talofa lava, malo elalei, fakalofa lahiatu, nisan bulava naka, kia orana, and warm Pacific greetings to you all. So a very big welcome from me as leader of UNDP to the prize ceremony tonight. 
and I start by especially welcoming the big guests of honour, those from local and indigenous communities who are being recognised for their incredible contribution to sustainable development. They are the reason we are here, they inspire us, and we're all looking forward to hearing the stories of what they have done as they come across the stage shortly. We are a very broad audience tonight. Welcome to all from the People's Summit, from civil society. Welcome to the presidents, heads of state, prime ministers, ministers, senior officials, UN officials, academics, researchers, everybody who is here tonight. You're a wonderful and large audience, and we're going to have a great time as we celebrate this evening. And so, all of you, give yourselves a hand for being here. And can I uh, especially also acknowledge the partners uh, of UNDP's work uh, through the Equator Initiative. I want to acknowledge governments of Norway, Germany, and Sweden. I want to acknowledge UN Environment Programme. I want to acknowledge Conservation International, the Convention on Biological Diversity, Fordham University, IUCN, PCI Media Impact, and RARE all partners who are here tonight, and thank you for your ongoing support. Well, we're here for Rio plus 20. We are here 20 years on from an Earth Summit, which challenged nations and communities alike to make progress on sustainable development. And I guess one of the messages we take from the amazing local initiatives we're honouring this evening is that people don't wait for governments to act, people can and do act and get on with it. And that's why I feel so proud of the achievements we will be recognizing. And through the Equator Prize, we can highlight how the local initiatives for sustainable management of ecosystems are not only good for the environment, but they empower local people and increase their livelihoods, capacities, and options as well. And to support such work is central to what the UN Development Programme does. And I might say the experience we get of working at the local level alongside local communities helps us to address the global challenges as well. And there are so many global challenges, and this two weeks at Rio is uh, obviously addressing a very wide range of them. But out of tonight's winners, we see the local solutions. Local solutions on issues like food security, and I noted Sudan's Zanab for Women in Development, an amazing initiative winning a prize tonight, which organizes thousands of women around food security issues. A great deal to admire in their efforts. I noticed the initiative for adaptation to climate change from the community in Morocco's high Atlas Mountains. I noticed the community which has really showed the importance of empowerment, women and the land from Tajikistan, empowering women farmers. This is innovative, it's wonderful, and it's going to be amazing to hear more of the stories later this evening. So tonight is about honoring those who don't wait. Tonight is about honoring those who have got on and made a difference for sustainable development across its dimensions in their communities. And moving forward from Rio plus 20, it will be so critical to affirm and support the central role of the community-based organizations and local initiatives in delivering sustainable development solutions, truly showing that they think global, they act local, and they do make a difference. And I think we will all leave tonight very inspired by their work. Thank you very much and enjoy the evening. Muchas gracias. My role is to introduce to you all of the 25 winners which were selected by an independent technical advisory committee from a remarkable 812 nominations from 66 countries in 13 different languages. These communities are judged against key criteria such as impact, sustainability, innovation, 
empowerment of women, and social inclusion and resilience. Please refer to your prize winner brochures to learn more about these remarkable community winners. I'm now going to introduce to you Richard Branson. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's wonderful to be here tonight. Uh, thank you very much, Vicky. Um, and uh, it's a real honor to be um, here to award the Equator Prize to those inspiring community entrepreneurs. Uh, governments can't do it alone and uh, the planet just can't wait. Um, and at Virgin, we want to put people and the planet at the center of everything we do. So we support uh, new initiatives like the Carbon War Room, uh, the Elders, uh, the Oceanic Elders to protect our oceans. And every day we try to find market solutions to global problems. Um, anyway, I'm very proud to recognize uh, this year's awardees. Um, so, I think without further ado, we should get on to the winners. And um, the first winner is, all the way from Ethiopia, uh, Abra Hawe Atsba uh, from Natural Resource Management Initiative. Perhaps you'd like to come up. Thank you. Second winner is from Morocco, Association Amsin. The winner from Madagascar uh, is Anja Mire. Thank you. The next winner is from Honduras, Association of Water Committees of the Southern Sector of Pico Bonito. from Nicaragua, uh, Centro Alexander von Ruppel. From Bangladesh, Chunoti Co Management Committee. Um, and uh, from Mexico, the uh, Environmental and Social Studies Group. From Senegal, Fishers Association of the Rural Community of Mangugulat. From uh, Guatemala, Ishpi Yaka. From China, Hangbei Institute of Community Development and Marketing. The Maasai Wilderness Conservation Trust have won this one. From Egypt, Medicinal Plants Association, St. Catherine. From the Marshall Islands, uh, Nandrik Atoll Local Resources Committee. From Brazil, Pacari Network. From Indonesia, uh, Pimutran. From India, Shaswat. From Fiji, the CC Initiative Site Support Group. From 
from Swaziland, Swazi indigenous products. From the Solomon Islands, the TT Parry Descendants Association. From the Gambia, TRY Oyster Women's Association. And uh, from Colombia, the United Women Artisans Association of Los Limited. From Togo, Village Development Committee of Andopome. From Liberia, the West Africa Initiative of Liberia. From Tajikistan, Women and Earth. Finally, uh, from Sudan, the Center for Women in Development. Just another moment. Good evening, everyone. My name is Cristiana Figueres, and I am the executive secretary. I'm the executive secretary of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, and I trust that we all know that we cannot address climate change globally unless communities claim their power to implement solutions and creative solutions on the ground. So it is with gratitude and with total admiration that I am here to present the thematic prize for community-based adaptation to climate change. And this fantastic prize goes to, forget the Oscars, this is so much more exciting. 
This prize goes to Namdrik Atoll Local Resources Committee. I'm the Executive Secretary for the Convention on Biological Diversity. I'm a Brazilian, it's great to be here in Rio. It gives me great pleasure to be here in this evening award on the thematic prize for biodiverse conservation, sustainable use, and access and benefit sharing. And there's no way to conserve biodiversity if we don't preserve the traditional knowledge associated with biodiversity. So it is with ex extreme pleasure for me to announce that the winner for this prize is the Pacari Network. Nagaja, I am the tall, handsome, black man from Benin who is the head of the Desertification Convention. <laughs> and I am here tonight to give out the thematic prize for dry land management. And this fantastic prize goes out to, ta-da! Abra Wechpa Natural Resources Management Initiative. Next three thematic cards. 